of 106, so cross out 85, and put $106 per month for cross out all. In this case, it would say non-Medicare retirees. So that first sentence would read, raise retiree contributions toward retiree health plan premiums by the amount of $106 per month well, for Well, excuse me, change that one, change the 106 to an amount okay. equal to the well, I was gonna Medicare. Do that okay. So, um, for non-Medicare retirees. So that's that's the first sentence. The second sentence then would be phase in an $85 per month contribution for, so you cross out 106, put 85, per month contribution for all, cross out non-Medicare and put all retirees over two years. It would be 4250 per month in 2009 and 4250 per month in 2010. Take this as simply an estimate. I think if you kind of reverse those, you might be looking at projected revenues of approximately, very approximately, 500,000. So that, that would be how you would reframe that. And, and then I agree with Supervisor Smith. Overall, we're using $106 because we've been told that's what the Medicare Part B uh, cost is going to be in January. We want to match whatever it is. So ultimately, what we write up may, in fact, have the wording Medicare Part B contribution. And I would say, Ms. Glassy, that possibly that, that last phrase, and I, I know you're taking it out of the document, this phase in concept, but, but I would say one part that could be maybe, uh, and this would be a, a compromise on where I think we should go fiscally, sort of rolling it back. It's already, I'm rolling out a compromise position of my own already, in that we could actually wait on that phase in concept and basically just leave as is that formula for one year, because there's a lot of volatility right now with respect to the stock market, which affects the excess earnings. So what we could do is maintain our vigilance on that and not necessarily assume that, this, that it would be upped in the second year. We could use that wait and see approach. Uh, and, and just leave it at the, at the cost sharing of 50% for the retirees and 50% for the system and see what happens. And, and I think that we would all see if that wasn't covering things, we would be back to say it's got to go up to protect the plan or some other option would have to be entertained. But I, I think we could even compromise on that. And I'm just rolling that out yeah. early. Thank you. Just as a general st statement, you know, I, I haven't been involved in, of course, the adult committee or in the retirement board, but I, I have a real reluctancy to move forward with anything that doesn't have the support of the Health Benefits Committee and the retirement board. I have a lot of respect for the people in, involved in there, and especially the retirement board. You know, the, the integrity of the whole retirement system plus the benefits package is, you know, that's something they work on every every month on. And uh, I'm going to weigh heavily on, on, on their recommendations. So I'm going to be real reluctant to support anything that doesn't have their support. If I could just say that, that that makes a great deal of sense. I think that they've certainly weighed it. The only thing I would point out is that as the Board of Supervisors, you have the additional responsibility of looking at the county's resources and, and protecting those. And, you know, that's that's a responsibility that kind of only only you get to uh, but our them. real resources in this county when it are comes to people. the service are the people that work for the county yes. and, and we need to respect not only their present performance but their past performance yeah Explain to me the difference in numbers or in relationship to the pre-1998 retirees versus all retirees or maybe even to the um, Medicare contribution. Okay, I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm trying to figure out if we eliminated from the, any of these equations the folks covered under the promise of the pre-1998 contributions are covered by the county, what that computation would look like in the final run. So I'm trying to figure out how many are covered under that previously board made promise versus who would be included in any contributions after that. 
Does that make any sense? I think so. I'll take a stab at it. My understanding is that under the retiree plan, currently we've got 710 um, enrollees, and that's retirees and, and their dependents, mostly retirees. In terms of active employees now who, when they retire, are eligible for retiree health, that's 459. Okay. So in terms of the retirement system, you've got a, a slightly more than a 50% increase if all 459 of them were to retire tomorrow, which fortunately they won't. Um, <coughs> however, the costs that we're talking about in these projections are only based on current enrollees. That's 710. There's an assumption that, you know, people come on to retirement and people leave retirement. And, I, you know, you'd have to look at the actuarial report to look at the um, entire scheduling of how all of that occurs. Certainly over, if I'm remembering from the actuarial report, over the next, most people are expected to retire who are eligible for retiree health over the next 10 to 15 year period. 